please be seated. Well, good morning to everyone, everyone, and welcome to Mandarin Presbyterian Church. My name is Jeff Arnold, and I have been a pastor here at MPC uh, for the past 14 years. We are gathered here today in this place because MPC is the church home of Tommy and Carol Hazuri. On behalf of the family, thank you so much for being here to offer condolences and to pay respect to the family. The outpouring of love that they have received has meant more than they can possibly convey to you. Today, in some respects, is about Tommy. How could it not be? But truly, we would not be here in this place if it weren't for the love and grace we find extended to us through God's Son, Jesus Christ. It really is about Jesus. If you would like to know more about how to have a personal relationship with him, we would love to talk with you and to hear your story. In the Gospel of John, chapter 11, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Thomas Lester Hazuri Sr., Tommy as we know him, believed this and that provides hope and gives us reason to celebrate this day in the midst of his death. We are here today to mourn his loss, so tears would certainly be appropriate. And we are here to celebrate his life, and I'm sure we will hear stories that will also make us laugh. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Help us in this time of loss. We thank you that your scriptures remind us that you are a light in the darkness that cannot be hidden, that cannot be overcome. A great light in our midst has gone out, and we may find that we are afraid of the darkness. Do not allow us to be overcome by this darkness, but comfort us with your light and sustain us in this time, confirming in us the hope of the resurrection. Jesus, we ask that you would be present in powerful ways to the entire Hazuri family today, especially with Carol and Tommy Jr. Surround them with your love. Help them and the entire Hazuri family to be filled with encouragement through the stories that they hear and the outpouring of love that is directed towards them. Help us as friends, family, colleagues, and your church to be attentive to how we might be able to come alongside them and point them to you. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I would invite you to stand as we join in singing our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. Oh, 
maybe see it. Thank you, Wayne. It's wonderful to have you singing here today. I know you sang at Tommy and Carol's wedding. Tommy is an oration, a gift to have you as a thread through all of those things in life. Thank you for being here. Well, this morning there are several passages of scripture that I'd like to, to read. The first one, no doubt, is, is a familiar one at funerals, and it, and it is such because it provides such a sense of comfort and peace um, in the midst of a time where we might feel alone to know that we indeed are not alone, but we have one in Jesus who longs to walk with us and encourage us in the midst of the challenges and the hurts and the pains and the speed bumps and the potholes that we face in our journey. So hear these words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These next words from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 speak to the, the tension and the struggle and the tug of war that we have with ourselves, really on a daily basis, but, but especially in a time like this where we find ourselves on one hand, thinking of a story about Tommy that, that made us laugh, and then in the very next breath, or perhaps the same breath, thinking of a story that, that causes us to get choked up and, and teary. And the writer of these words knew that all too well as he wrote these words for Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Then from the Gospel of Luke in the 10th chapter, verse 27. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And finally, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Amen. This time, the family has asked a few people to speak, and so first, um, Danny Lee will speak, and then Larry Hazard.
Wayne, I should probably get you to sing my notes. But, uh, he's truly amazing. And Wayne is probably one of the few guys that has known Tommy as long as I have. I'm here today to say farewell to my great friend of 60 years. Unless your last name is Azuri or Bailey, I have probably known Tommy longer than most anyone. Our joint families have laughed together at celebrations and cried at times of sadness. Carol and my wife Linda have built the same bond that Tommy and I enjoyed. He was raised above his family's grocery store on Liberty Street, the youngest of four siblings, as was I. His family embraced me as my family accepted him as one of the leads. He would take me to the Ramallah Club, a social club for families of Arabic descent, and at one of their many celebrations, and he would walk around and introduce me to the congregants, and they would look at this tall, red-headed, blonde-headed, light-skinned guy with a question mark on their face. Tommy would say in a dead pen, he was adopted. <laughs> Our friendship began in the early 60s at Jackson High School. Tommy probably held his first elected office there on the student council. At Jacksonville University, he formed a new political party, which is hard to believe with Tommy would be that adventurous, uh, to better serve the students. Not unexpectedly, he was elected president of the student body. If you believe in destiny, then you have to believe in Tommy's life. I am confident the good Lord placed him here to devote himself to serving the citizens of Jacksonville. He served as a page in the U.S. Congress and intern for Congressman Charlie Bennett. He's already getting that pedigree. He worked in Mayor Lou Ritter's administration, which was probably his first governmental job. That set the stage for what was to be a lifetime of community service. Not many people know or remember that his first foray into elected service is when he read, ran for the city council in the early 70s. He ran against a local plumbing contract. That was his first and one of his few losses in the, elect in the electoral spectrum. Tommy's compassion for people and his city guided his career and his life from start to finish. He was a champion for the little guy and equal rights. Hard-headed, yep. Brash, eh, sometimes. Stubborn, always. Especially if he thought he was right and doing the right thing for his constituents. Loyal friend to the very end. I cannot tell you the number of times that he offered unsolicited aid to a friend, a staffer, or anyone in need. I feel that I have the unique perspective of talking about the man and his goodness because of our decades-long friendship of 60 years and to his political persona because I was privileged to serve in his administration. He was a champion for public safety and worked tirelessly to increase funding for police and fire. He took one of the first steps to provide adequate funding for their pension fund. He would be honored today to see the respect that the Honor Guard has portrayed for him. It was recently printed that he had a chip on his shoulder. And I'd rather think that he was on a mission and could not understand anyone standing in his way. <laughs> he even aggravated Carol when he was slow to act on getting the sales tax support for the school system. But he had a plan. He wanted to make sure that that incentive would pass. So he maybe drug his feet, aggravated my daughter, who's a teacher, and his own wife. He lost some friends when he backed the LGBT ordinance, but he was doing what he thought best for the city. His destiny was to be mayor. He served the city well and would have won his second term had he not taken ill advice from some staffers about landfills and garbage tax. And our, our mayors that are visiting us today know all too well, you don't raise taxes going into an election. Much has been said about his initiative to rid the city of tolls and foul air. His tenure was filled with many more successes, way beyond those two major accomplishments. Let's not forget that he continued the quest started by Jake Godhold to bring the NFL to Jacksonville. 
We traveled to many cities and courted many owners and working with Touchdown Jacksonville to continue that effort. Tommy, I want to tell you today, my friend, that an NFL team will soon be in Duval. <laughs> Matt Carucci talked about Tommy's quips. His favorite was, let it be said, let it be done. I have heard that more times than I can count over the 60 years. The one that he always used on me was, be reasonable, do it my way. <laughs> and that was etched in stone. The one that I really like is, my word is my bond. Brother Tommy, you practice that one all your life. I thank, I thank the Lord for making Tommy my friend and friend for bringing Carol and Tommy Jr. into our family. We all know that as a student of history and politics, Tommy, you are now sitting at the round table of angels in heaven, debating with our forefathers and chastising those that are not Democrats. No doubt that when we get there, you will be campaigning to be the head honcho. <laughs> let it be said, let it be done, my friend. Thomas Lester Hutchinson. I love you. See you soon, my brother. On this, my word is my bond. Thank you. I know last night I saw a lot of Missouris at the service last night, and I see a lot of Missouris in here right now. And I'm sad to say that I don't know every Missouri in town. There are a lot of Missouris. But when Tommy and I both attended JU together in the mid 60s, I would go to my class and I kept seeing the vote for Tommy Missouri, vote for Tommy Missouri. I had no idea who Tom Hazard was. <laughs> and so I finally met him and we spoke and talked and that's 60, 70 years later. We've always been the best of friends. Tommy had a special gift and the gift was he knew what he was going to do in life from the very beginning. He, he did what he wanted to do. He did it well. He did it his entire life. Very few people can say that. Uh, Tommy, uh, when he was mayor, he did two things that changed the complexion of this city forever, forever. The tolls were discouraged on the city. The lines would be backed up four and five blocks at, 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 at times to pay tolls. The, the, we were known as the stinkiest city in, in the South. Uh, because of the odors, Tommy took care of these problems. Tommy and I both had uh, a love for the movies. We loved to go to the movies. And Carol and Tommy and my wife and I went to the movies every Friday night for about 25, 30 years. And we had great times, and I loved going to the movies. The only thing I didn't like was Tommy was always late. <laughs> he was late everywhere. It didn't make any difference whether it was the movies, the restaurant. He was always late. And I thought about him when he passed. And I said, I know that when the Lord put his hands out to welcome him, welcome Tommy into the kingdom of heaven, Tommy was probably around a few minutes late. <laughs> <clears throat> he was a great public servant to the city. And what made it so great is the fact that he served from his heart. Big difference when you serve from your heart. Tommy, I just want you to know that these people are here today to honor you. And I just want to say, God bless your memory. Disappointed.
usher to help me up the stairs. <laughs> My name is uh, Kevin Pound, Missouri. Uh, <laughs> not really, but really Kevin Pound. I, I'm the former pastor here at uh, Manor Presbyterian Church. I retired about 18 months ago. I uh, served here for some 26 years. We had moved. Uh, before then, for a short period of time, where I served down in South Jackson Presbyterian Church. And I was introduced to uh, the fact that there was a fellow here, his name was Tommy, and uh, he was the mayor of the city, and had just done the things that were just talked about, moving toll booths and, and the odor of the community. Through the years, um, that I was here starting 1993, I had spoken and prayed for Tommy on a variety of different occasions. And truly, I'm honored to be here today, I'm glad to be able to be here today, I'm glad to be a part of the family section of speaking. But I am sorry for the occasion. I was, uh, his pastor, one of the pastors for many years, and I counted Tommy as my friend. It's already been shared and will be shared. Tommy loved Jacksonville and had a burden of being a lifelong Presbyterian. Either down at First Presbyterian Church downtown or here at uh, MPC. First time I spoke on behalf of Tommy and prayed for him was the kickoff campaign in 1995, where he was going to run for mayor again. It was 26 years ago. I've been a senior pastor here at the church for two years. I was thinking 26 years ago. A lot's happened in 26 years. Where was the internet? I found so much has changed, except for the fact that Tommy was always present. 26 years ago, I don't know, I must have been 20 years old. <laughs> I remember Tommy's hair. Bed looked dark, and so did mine. My hair got gray, and miraculously, so did Tommy's hair. <laughs> I would felt it necessary to comment to Tommy about the shades of the change in his hair. <laughs> well, Tommy had declared that he was going to run for mayor again. He had a kickoff event. It was just around the corner at the uh, Ramadi Inn. And uh, there were truly hundreds of uh, people who gathered there. And he had asked me to come and pray. And the truth was is that a year or so before Tommy had done a significant favor for my wife, Patty, and I, and our family. How, how many of you, just, how many of you have ever had Tommy do you a favor? <laughs> Carol, you don't need to raise your hand. Tommy, Tommy owed you, Carol. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> well, anyway, we're at the Ramada Inn. You know, I was 18, 19 you know, years old. And, Big crowd, people milling on around. Some I would have called during the beginning was sort of a fellowship hour. Others would have called it a cocktail hour. <laughs> uh, in the middle of, of all of this, and it, uh, I was introduced by someone, and uh, nobody was impressed. The lights didn't appear to come down upon me. People continued to talk and drink and do whatever. And, and the guy waved me up, and I, I went up on the platform, and I looked around, and people were still milling and talking, and I wasn't quite sure what to do. So I just did sort of what Tommy would do, just whatever first came into my head. And I said, uh, um, I'd like for you to put down your drinks for a minute. Now, what I meant by that was, um, stop drinking for a second. 
But what happened stunned me because people all over the room started to put their drinks on the floor. I don't know whether they were the Baptists that were in the crowd. Um, I'm, I was stunned. I'm, I am a Presbyterian pastor. I'm not used to people taking me so seriously and literally. That was the first time that I just spoke briefly, even though I wasn't supposed to, and prayed. And uh, it was the last time I think Tommy had me at such an event. <laughs> I think family felt safe for me to be here today in the sanctuary. I promise not to interrupt the reception later this afternoon. My Christian brother, Tom Missouri, truly, I was talking with Carol, always wanted to be the mayor. And when he was not reelected a second time, Tommy truly was not deterred. Because deep down inside of uh, Tommy's heart was that he just really wanted to serve and love our community. So he served on the school board. I would go and pray safely and not have to worry about people drinking or not drinking. And pray at the city council. I, I think, uh, you know, Tommy, honestly, if he'd have lived long enough, Tommy would have served as a dog catcher. I, I think <laughs> he'd have been the chief dog catcher in the end, for sure. Because in his heart, he just really wanted to use his considerable skills to make our city a better place to live. And like you, I say, thank God. Thank God. Now I know some Christians wish Tommy would have worn his faith more on his sleeve. But the truth is, and as just was alluded, Tommy wore his faith on his heart. It was his love, his desire to serve and to make life fair for all in our community. This great passion was born and inspired by Tommy's faith. Tommy knew that I didn't always agree with him. We talk about it. But I never doubted his commitment to our city. I was grateful to be a supporter because of his relentless courage, which may be just about the most important virtue I can think of. His courage to serve and lead no matter the criticism, which was often fierce and sometimes probably justified. Years ago, uh, my wife Patty and I were with Carol and we were at an event and I was to go in and, and pray for him and whatever board council he was about to join in. And I remarked to Carol that I often thought about how hard it was to be married to a pastor. But I said it could not near be near as difficult to be married to a politician, particularly the one Tommy Hazuri, who was often quoted on the front page. All right, we all volunteered before. How many of you have ever been mad at Tommy at some time? Raise your hand. <laughs> I, I knew you would, Carol. <laughs> well, be at peace. I know that he was probably also mad at all of you. <laughs> Eventually, Tommy made peace with all of his critics. You know that. It's been written about it. And I think that's why there's so many here that aren't named Hazuri. <laughs> Truly, Tommy loved, cared about everybody. The paper said he never met a stranger. That's the truth. I've actually met politicians that were aloof and dismissive, but that was not Brother Tommy Missouri. I had been his pastor, and I thought it was great that I was his friend, but I was just one of thousands that considered Tommy his friend. I know how Tommy loved his Irish, Alaskan, Catholic, Carol O'Brien. He doesn't get a star for that. But it really is true that Carol O'Brien married Tommy Hazuri, an Arab American, here in Jacksonville, First Presbyterian Church, 42 years ago. A little less than two weeks ago, I was in there at home. I'd been told how ill Tommy was. 
And while we were there, we talked and uh, laughed and discussed lots of things. Every time Carol had to get up, answer the phone, go get something, Tommy would wait about 10 seconds and then he'd start saying, Carol! Carol! She'd come back, yes, Tommy, I'm here. I'm... It made me smile. And I thought about the bond of their love of 42 years. Not easy to let go of that love. It is amazing how God puts with such different people of such different backgrounds together. Catholic Carol became Presbyterian, married an Arab American, maybe because there were 42,000 Missouri's that were living here. <laughs> God gave them, Tommy Jr., such a gift. They have fiercely loved him ever since. God bless you, Carol, and Tommy Jr. As you remember in grief for the loss of your husband and father, and oh, Carol, you have been a rock of stability. You have exemplified grace under pressure and a constant presence of love and support. It, uh, Tommy would not be as good a man as he was if it wasn't for you. And that's the truth. May you feel the love and the support of this day. Our prayers are with you and your son. When I was in their home talking, laughing, sharing with Carol and Tommy, Tommy spoke of the love they had for his family, how blessed he was. I haven't been able to live the life, as was commented earlier, of public service. I told him I didn't think God cared whether we had a D or an R after our name. He looked at me, smiled, laughed, and said he wasn't so sure. <laughs> but I can tell you something Tommy was really sure of. Tommy was sure he wanted Christian after his name. Tommy trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. Told me he was confident of God's promise through Christ of his destination, being with God. And I just want to, just briefly, share some of my last words with you that I have with Tommy and Carol in their home. For I was pondering the thought of, as I have done with so many, how do you let go of a dear loved one that you love so much and have spent so much of your life with? I told them that I had often been moved by Jesus' last words on the cross, according to the Gospel of Luke, 23rd chapter. And Jesus, in a loud voice, in his last gasping breath, prayed a prayer. That prayer was uh, personalized by Jesus because he prefaced it with Father. But the prayer is actually a quote from Psalm 31, 5. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus, in his last dying breath, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It was a prayer of trust, a prayer of surrender, a prayer of confident hope that he could trust his Heavenly Father that all, with all of who he was, his spirit, his life, all that he had been, all that he will be, he committed, he commended, he placed all of it into God's hands. The hands that the Bible tells us that fashioned the heavens, the universe, the hands that Isaiah reminded us that we are the clay, God is the potter, we are the work of his hand. The hands that ultimately were nailed pierced on a cross. Isaiah 
recounts the Lord saying, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Says the Lord, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Now those same palms that God said were engraved 500 years later would become nailed. They would become pierced on a cross to fulfill that promise. It was those hands that Jesus declared to religious leaders of his day that were so upset with him. And he said that he knew his sheep, he would give them eternal life, that they would never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So it is into those nail pierced loving hands that we today commit Tommy Azuri's spirit. It is into those hands that I hope you will commit your spirit. Thanks be to God for the gift of life, eternal life, through his Son, Jesus the Christ. And may the peace of God be upon you all. So if any of you got a text or anything that you want to throw something at me now, just go ahead and throw it. But I was doing what he asked for. So first and foremost, on behalf of Aunt Carol and our entire family, I would like to express a huge, huge thank you to each and every one in the Jacksonville community. We have been truly overwhelmed at the outpouring, and I do mean outpouring, of the love that has been bestowed upon our family and our Uncle Tommy. It truly has blown us away. We've listened to news stories, we've read newspaper articles, watched TV specials, looked at tweets, seen Facebook posts, received hundreds of phone calls, texts, and cards. Thank you all. They have been gratefully received. I personally knew my Uncle Tommy was loved, but never, ever could have comprehended how much he was loved. It has meant the world to us. Of course, I mess up and he'd be calling me names right now because I don't have the right spot and all of this good stuff. So anyway, I come to you today on a little different perspective. I am the niece who loved her uncle dearly and will miss him dearly. I think I always saw my Uncle Tommy as a big bratty brother who aggravated me to the max. Sometimes, but loved me and always supported me unconditionally. We had a very true, unique relationship. From the time I was little, I remember spending time with him and Uncle Jack every Christmas, playing electric football or whatever game we received that year, and we all wore our JU t-shirts that he gave us. As I grew up, I learned what it was like to have an uncle in politics. That was fun. My friends were often recruited to wave signs, hand out literature, do whatever we needed to help Uncle Tommy get elected. It truly was a family affair. But I will never forget the week Uncle Tommy took me to be a page in Tallahassee when he was state legislature, a state legislator. I was probably his first exposure to a 12-year-old girl and probably the last one he ever wanted. <laughs> True story. Um, Uncle Tommy and Steve Padgett had taken me to get pizza and ice cream, but you don't do that at 9 o'clock at night with a 12-year-old without random K 
vacation. So we came home and we were in a hotel in Tallahassee and he was in the bed on the right and I was in the bed on the left and I'm not lying. In the middle of the night, I happened to be a sleepwalker. I started doing the Jaws theme. Bum, 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 bum. And about that time, I took off to the door and I'm grabbing the latch to undo it. He's going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Legislator attacks me, oh my gosh. He flipped. So that night, in every 15 minutes, I heard, Dana, are you asleep? You're not going to do that again, are you? So, payback. As I grew up, our relationship seemed to grow closer and closer. Most of the time, we were on opposite sides in our political views, but we both decided our relationship was much more important than where we stood politically. Our bond was bigger than our views. That, to me, is a picture of love conquers all. The one thing I knew for sure, no matter what his stance was on what issue, he was always a man of honesty and integrity. Always. He always did what he felt was right, no matter what. No one could ever question that. It was the character trait in him that I most admired. Uncle Tommy and I spoke or text almost every day. The last two years was every day, every night, in the middle of the night, all the time. He was such a part of my life, my husband's life, and my kid's life. We would go out to dinner, as many of you know, and he would speak to every person in the restaurant, everyone. And it would make me crazy because, as you know, it was hard to carry on a conversation or even finish dinner. Stranger was not in that man's vocabulary. He truly loved people. One morning, this is such a good Tommy, so typical, my husband and um, Tommy had breakfast, Uncle Tommy had breakfast, and somehow they ended up in the dollar store. So, you know, Panera's there, next door is the dollar store. As they were walking around, a man came up to speak. Uncle Tommy, as he always did when he saw somebody, and you all know, hello, my man. Then he and the man proceeded to talk. It was extremely obvious the man had on his head a clump of hair that was meant to be a hairpiece. You all know Uncle Tommy, and he could not contain himself. So midstream in the conversation with the man, Uncle Tommy says in true Tommy fashion, did you get that hairpiece here? <laughs> Anybody surprised about that comment? We all have those stories. There were always funny, crazy, unexpected situations if you hung around with my Uncle Tommy. We all love to laugh and to be around him, and I'm so grateful for those times. But I learned to be even more grateful for the times following his terminal lung diagnosis and lung transplant journey. I'm thankful, Aunt Carol, to be allowed, to have been allowed to walk through that journey with you guys. On July 24, 2020, Uncle Tommy received the call that a lung was available. Aunt Carol happened to be out running errands that day, and I was on the other side of town, and I get the phone call from him. It's time. I go, it's time for what? He goes, we got to go. So um, within about 20 hours, Uncle Tommy had a new lung that was to give him life. As a family, we could not help but feel such happiness. But we also had such sorrow for a family who had to lose a loved one so that ours may live. We will be eternally grateful to that family. And I would fail my Uncle Tommy today if I did not encourage each and every one of us to consider being an organ donor. It's so very important to stay with Uncle Tommy. After the surgery, Uncle Tommy exceeded all the expectations for a transplant patient his age. The doctors seemed to be amazed. And let me go on record today. His doctors in Mayo were fabulous, but I believe there were two factors as to why Uncle Tommy did so well. The first was his love for Aunt Carol and my cousin Tommy. He continued to persevere for the two of them, even as it got difficult. The other factor was because of the amazing care my Aunt Carol gave him. She was the real rock star, and you are incredible, Aunt, Aunt Carol, and thank you for loving Uncle Tommy the way you did. All things pointed towards a successful lung tra 
um, for Uncle Tommy over the next several months. This past July, Uncle Tommy began to have some increasingly, some increasing more struggles with his breathing. It seemed to progress rather quickly within the next 60 days. And on August the 25th, he was released from Mayo into hospice home care. For the next 17 days, we would all circle together as a family and friends for plenty of laughter, tears, wonderful memory sharing, and sleepless nights because he kept me up all night. When I was on duty, he didn't shut his mouth all night. Dana, 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 and I remember begging, would you please close your eyes? So I'm thankful for those times, but boy, he wore me out. On September the 11th at 11.13, Uncle Tommy, and everyone's ass, very peacefully, closed his eyes and took his last breath. I would love to share with you a verse I feel very fitting for my Uncle Tommy's life. It's 2 Timothy 4.7. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, and I've kept the faith. Thank you, Uncle Tommy. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, precious of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
and Dana, thank you, thank you for sharing. Just to hear the stories, I know that, that all of us have a story to share, and, and I really hope that over the course of the next weeks um, and days, you will take time to, to write a note or to make a call to someone in the family to be able to share a story with them. I think there's such... I think there's such tremendous power. Do you want to just use this mic? I think there's such tremendous power in story, and we have the opportunity to allow someone who has passed to continue to speak in powerful ways into our lives. The lessons that they have taught us, the ways that they challenged us, that perhaps made us better people, that perhaps at, at some point or other made us very irritated <laughs> with Tommy. And yet, at the end of the day, when we, when we think back to those things, it is such a gift and to think about the way that God has given us the gift of one another and the way that our lives intersect together. Well, Tommy Hazuri was a giant in our community, all 5'8 or 5'9 of him. He was someone that was larger than life. And yet, at the same time, he was so down to earth. He held a position of prominence numerous times, and at the very core, he was simply a husband, a father, a brother, an uncle, and a friend to many of us. I so appreciated hearing the words of reflection about Tommy from the men and women on Jacksonville City Council. And his touch and impact on your lives runs deep, and I know we'll continue to speak in and through each of you. What a great gift. Listing his accolades, it is evident that Tommy was former just about everything, as I heard. What didn't he do? He served his city, state, and country well, and he could have retired at any point a long time ago. But there was no quit and Tommy Hazuri. He longed to use the gifts that God had given him, and he wasn't going to keep his mouth shut. I know there were times you probably wish he had, but he was going to speak if there was something to say. And Tommy gave 100% all the way to the very end. A stranger to no one, he had a way of making others feel so important. You may not know, but Tommy was also the mayor of Panera here in Mandarin. <laughs> in fact, if you all don't have stock in Panera, you really missed it <laughs> on that one. He loved to greet people. There was no stranger in Panera. And I would run into him on occasion when I would come into Panera to meet with a group. I know that many of you met him there at different points, and, and he was in charge when he was there. When I would run into him, sometimes I didn't go over to the table just to spare the other people that were at the table, but when I did go over, without fail, he would introduce me to every one of you that was seated with him. And let me tell you how much I enjoyed the looks on your face when I knew that you were being introduced to me for the fifth or sixth time, <laughs> that Tommy was going to stop in order to be hospitable and welcome me into that space. Perhaps you were one of those people that was introduced as well, and I'm sure that's the case. Tommy loved people and their stories, and he was a great listener. One of the greatest gifts God gives us is one another. You know, too often we don't tell others of the impact on our lives. Too often we wait until it's too late to express our appreciation of love to another. So in light of that, I hope that you will take the time this week to express your appreciation to someone. It doesn't have to be something big. Even the smallest words of affirmation can go such a long way. So in honor of Tommy, make that happen this week. That's your assignment. Reach out through a note or a call and let them know. Again, one of God's greatest gifts to us is each other. Here at MPC, Tommy and Carol would sit near the back of the church in the section right there that was re they referred to as Saint's Corner. I think the real reason they had to sit back there was Tommy was talking to everybody on the way in, and that's where they, that's where they had to sit. 
but it was a picture of hospitality when we would head down the aisles following the service, that he would be right there to wave and, and nod. Maybe he just wanted to get credit for being here, but he always <laughs> smiled and was so hospitable. Earlier I shared Luke 10, 27, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But that passage, which you see in, in similar ways in, in two of the other Gospels, in this particular Gospel happens to be part of a larger story in the parable of the Good Samaritan. So hear these words. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Jesus asked, how do you read it? The man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down to Jerusalem from, from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, clearly in this context, the unlikeliest of heroes for the listeners of Jesus' words. The Samaritans would not have been the hero. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. When I was thinking about Tommy and his public service for years and years, I couldn't help but think how perfectly this passage fit him, for he loved God and he loved others. And at the same time, there were multiple times throughout his time in public service where he was that good Samaritan, where the priest was walking by, where the Levite was walking by, and yet Tommy would say, we need to stop. We need to help this person out. That was at the core of who Tommy is. And it's going to be something that I know all of us will remember and hopefully will speak into who we are and to who we continue to become. He lived it out in his everyday service. More often than not, he was like the Good Samaritan in the passage with eyes to see the one in need, willing to take action. Mandarin Presbyterian Church has partnered with Habajacks here in Jacksonville to build homes. We raise funds, recruit volunteers, and serve together to make the dream of homeownership a reality for deserving families. The most recent project was held up in a need of one last approval before we could proceed. Month after month, we weren't getting the approval that we needed. We reached out to Tommy, and guess what? You know the answer. <laughs> Two days later, Tommy helped Habajax to receive the stamp of approval that we needed, and we were able to get started on that project. When we celebrate the completion of that home and have a dedication sometime in November or December, Carol, I hope you'll be able to be there as we celebrate that time. Matthew 25, 35 to 37, and verse 40 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That is the manner in which Tommy sought to love others. He may not have always agreed with his political views, or ever for that matter, but you had to admire the way he cared for his sick. Tommy definitely had eyes to see and a heart to care for the least of these. Might we too, like our friend Tommy, seek to see where we can make a difference by coming alongside others in need. Tommy genuinely cared. Even when he would disagree with others, that may not initially sound like a big deal, but that is truly a lost art. Friends, we struggle to disagree with one another and continue to maintain a cordial relationship. And yet Tommy was able to disagree with us and continue to love us. He wasn't afraid to speak up in disagreement, and yet then he would extend an olive branch. Today we are here to celebrate and give thanks for the life of Tommy Hazuri. But that celebration would not be possible if it weren't for the thanks we have for God and the willingness he had to send his son Jesus Christ that we may know his love and grace for our lives. In Luke's Gospel, in the 14th chapter, there's a story of a great banquet, a great feast. And a friend shared with Carol that Tommy is now getting to take part in the greatest of banquets. Verse 15 says, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. I know that Tommy is feasting indeed. And I'm confident that he's heard these words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Let's pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. I give you thanks for these friends and family who are gathered together to say thank you for the gift that you have given us in Tommy Missouri. God, I pray that you would surround the family, that you would help them to feel your embrace, that you would walk with them each step of the way in the midst of this time. God, grief is such a tricky thing, and the hurt and the pain that we feel is so real. And yet, God, the love that you long to extend for us, the healing that you long for us to experience, is present whenever we are ready. God, help us to be people, friends to the Hazuri family that can be present to bring a meal or give a word of encouragement or, or walk with them in the midst of the things that they will face in coming days. Help us, God, as we think about how we live our own lives, to live in such a way that would honor you, that we might come to know the love and grace that you have for us, and that we might be able to extend that to others. We lift up all these things and pray them in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh. 
assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath said his own now hear these words in the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always from this day forward and evermore. Amen. Would you please stand? I'm going to be short. Okay. I'm Richard, one of Tommy's three brothers. On behalf of Carol and the entire family, we'd like to thank you for attending this celebration. Anyone who knew Tommy knew of his famous quotes and one-liners. And I know this has been said before, but I can't think of no more appropriate way to end this service with, this, this, with these words. So let it be written, let it be said. Thank you, Vic, God bless. Thank you.